when I went to the uh, recent World Economic Forum, I was handed a badge which has a chip inside, and I met these guys called uh, the Kavelsky Group. And they are about to show the world the credit card of the future, which will help stop a lot of the fraud problems. It has a little chip inside, and we're going to learn a lot about what's going on with the credit cards right now. Who are you? So, uh, uh, Robert, I'm uh, Philippe Guillot. I'm a co-founder and a head of technology at uh, Nagra ID Security, which is part of the Kudelski Group, a group you just talked about. Yeah. And who are you? I'm Sebastian Pasek. I'm a product manager at MasterCard. I work on all pl things related to chip innovation, including our latest display card. Very cool. A little bit about Kudelski first. You guys make all sorts of devices that go inside paper, like uh, playing cards or uh, ski passes. and like the badges at the World Economic Forum and all sorts of different things, right? That's correct. We try to, uh, we try to be everywhere there is a, uh, interaction with the public, uh, like uh, badges, uh, debit cards, uh, uh, casino talk uh, chips, and, uh, and, and so on. Yep. And we're here to learn about the credit card of the future. So why do you need a new credit card? Why, you know, why, why isn't that old plastic card good enough? <laughs> Um, well, as you know, when there's money involved, there's uh, frauds are involved as well. They're trying to uh, steal your money. And aside to the fact that some people are losing money due to fraud, as a consumer, it's very inconvenient when you see that you have uh, had a uh, fraud transaction on your credit card or even worse on your uh, current account. And so what we're trying to do is uh, make, put in place some uh, preventive measures to actually avoid any of these fraud transactions and actually make uh, the use of the credit card uh, more convenient for uh, for our customers. Yeah, one of the problems with the credit cards is all the information is on the surface of the card. So if I hand it to you at a restaurant or something like that, you can write down my number and my security code, and then you can go to Ab Amazon absolutely. and start buying. Absolutely. So this is one of the main differences uh, with chip cards, especially the display card, is because the actual security information is within the chip, so you can actually get to the information. It's really protected. And what you get on the display is really only a one-time uh, password that you can use once and not afterwards. So even if uh, a fraudster would actually steal information, but it's on your computer, on the merchant site, you would not be able to reuse it because it's only valid for one time. So yeah. that's the main difference. A, a lot of people are starting to use these kinds of new password systems. At Rackspace, I, I have a little key, an RSA key, that gives me a code every few seconds that I use to sign into our internet. And um, uh, where else? Oh, on my Google accounts now, mm -hmm. I have two-pass uh, authentication, yeah. so it, I have a little app that generates a code, <coughs> right? Absolutely. So this is exactly the same idea. So we're talking about two-factor authentication, uh, so that if you need to compromise an account, you actually have two things. In this case, because there's a secure chip within the card, you actually need physically to have access to the card in order to be able to use it. So you cannot just copy the information and use it later. You actually need the physical token to be able to access it. What we're doing here is actually putting everything onto the card, so as a consumer, when I make a, a purchase with my card, I pick it up to type in the number, and I have my token right there. I don't have to look for another token in my drawer, in my back pocket, or my phone. Everything is on the card. So we have one card for all kinds of purchases securely. Yeah. Since you, you're putting a display in, and maybe we can talk about the technology inside, what, what is the technology inside these cards, and, and what else can you do with it other than just display a, a uh, password authentication. Well, first of all, we we've been working uh, a bunch of years on this on this technology. We had to uh, to find a, a flexible uh, display technology, which uh, which is not obvious, um, and uh, and bring a robust uh, um, construction into the card because the card today the credit card is used not only for payment, but you clean your windshield with it. You <laughs> uh, you know you forget it in your in your trousers. It goes in the washing machine. Uh, all kind of things can happen with a credit card, so um, uh, so we we uh, and we had to make it very secure as well, and uh, it needed to last more than three years because you know uh, if it stops in the middle of the way and you can't make payment anymore, it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, so we have we've been working hard on that, and uh, and today um, uh, we uh, we made this uh, this device available within the, the plastic within the plastic itself, yes. So these cards you're holding have one of these built into it? That's correct, all of them. Uh, yeah. if, I, if I press on the switch here, I get a code, and uh, I have one as well with a, 
with a pin pad. Now again, the pin pad, uh, we had to work on the touch technology because you can't pinch, you know, you can't pinch uh, a key. So uh, uh, it had to, to be uh, using a touch technology, so you just have to, you know, to touch it wi with your finger. Yeah. And uh, so that it's easy to use because what's the point of having a very secure device that nobody can use? Yeah. How much does this add to the cost of the device? Uh, uh, cost of the card, I mean. Well, today uh, you were uh, you were talking about you know banks uh, delivering on one side a debit card and then a token. Yeah. Uh, so that's first of all that's a double cost. Okay, you have the cost of the debit card and then mm -hmm. you have the cost of the token. And uh, also the uh, the other thing is that handling a token, packaging a token, shipping a token, that is not obvious. It costs money. Um, uh, versus a card today can be uh, sent through a basic envelope. It's it's uh, managed by machines. So uh, um, if you take the overall <coughs> budget, you know, uh, card plus token versus everything in a single card, uh, you're uh, almost half the price, half the cost of wow. the yes. It's it's amazing seeing the thinness and the and the manufacturing capability. What what made this possible and and why is it possible now? Uh, well, today, uh, f first of all, we need the uh, power to uh, to use this technology, and uh, everything is possible we c because we have flexible batteries, uh, uh, lithium batteries, uh, that uh, also uh, can last uh, a long time, more than three years. Secondly, um, because the battery is very small, this technology needs to be very uh, uh, low power uh, consumption. The printing technology, the, what we call the electronic printing technology, which is brand new, allows us to, to be very thin and uh, very precise in uh, putting the components on it. Yeah. What is on here? Is there a, a chip like a, in my computer or? Yeah, actually there are several chips uh, okay. that are behind these little, uh, these, uh, little uh, black, black things here. Yeah. And uh, they all communicate together. It's a, it's a kind of ecosystem. It's a platform. I, I would call that a platform. Okay. So you can, and this is also uh, contactless. It means that uh, you can upload the application through uh, contactless into the card. Oh wow! Yes. So it was made to be easy to fulfill, to uh, uh, to manage, and to ship to the customers. Wow! Yes. Um, can the card do anything else with that display other than just put a pass passcode on it? Of course. Uh, if, uh, as you see, this is a keypad, so you could convert this into a Tip calculator, uh, you know, a challenge response device, or kind of anything that uh, you can imagine that you know uh, needs a display. For instance, we have one of the cards that we have uh, displays, uh, you know, your last transactions. For instance, this one, which is uh, for Europe, yeah. uh, you have uh, your last transactions, you have your balance, how much you spent through the month, uh, and uh, and messages also. For instance. Uh, the bank can send back a message to you once uh, every time you pay, you know, because yeah. in Europe, when you pay, you have to, to, to put your card into the point, uh, the terminal or the ATM. So the bank can send back message to you like, oh, uh, you want uh, uh, you want something or call us or whatever. So this is brand new. You see, uh, in the past, there was the user, you know, lost in the middle of nowhere with a plastic card. And then there was the bank. And today, uh, you can have uh, user feedback yeah. uh, offline, which is uh, very new for, uh, for uh, customer experience. Now, you were showing me your new Android phone. Can the, the phone with the near field communication talk to the card at all? That's correct. Uh, we all know that the uh, near field communication or the NFC is uh, going to roll out, uh, most probably starting this year yeah. uh, with uh, Google and, uh, and probably Apple and uh, Nokia. Yep. So uh, we cannot stay out of this. Uh, so we need to be, to be compatible with this, that kind of technology. And this is why it's already uh, today we have the ability to, uh, with a, a Google Nexus uh, S phone. Yep. That, yeah, th there's yep. one here, actually. Yep. Uh, if you have a, an application here, for instance, a taxi driver, you know, how much is the fare? OK, 20 bucks. and then. The taxi driver holds this, and then that's my card. I just have to do that, and it communicates. Right. And it's going to uh, um, work the same way as it works with a point of sale, but you know, huge point of sale, and that kind of things. And this communicates, so yeah. we have no problem. Yeah. You see? Um, wow. So, yeah, 
this is so the way is, it's going. What does Mastercard think of this? So, uh, you know, are are you really going to innovate this way and have all these new kinds of ways to pay people? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're we're really a big supporter of this technology, uh, both of this play card, but of course the NFC technology as well. Um, as uh, Philippe said, the ability for a bank to communicate either directly or by storing uh, offline messages on the card itself is really new because on a simple plastic card you have no feedback, so you don't know whether the last transaction went through. Um, if you have a, a transit card, you don't know how many tickets you have. Yeah. So it means that transit operators need a, a special infrastructure to actually show you how many tickets you have. And this is changing everything. So whenever you, you use your card, you can actually get feedback on what just happened. You see all oh, my passes uh, as expired, I need a new one. Uh, what is my last uh, purchase I made? And so we're really pushing this new technology as a, as a way for, for banks to give feedback to, to customers. What is, direct financial information about transactions but like uh, Philippe said you know marketing messages or you know merchant giving you a discount yeah. you know come back within five days and get a free coffee or something so it hope it opens up a whole lot of new possibilities and the good thing is that uh, we have the infrastructure in place for the for the EMV chip uh, of course it's bound to EMV technology but we have 15 million acceptance points in the world where these cards work today yeah um, and so with the NFC uh, possibility, we're, we're bridging um, to, to an, the next step when NFC will be widespread. It will not be only you know, POS terminals, but phones or, or any or other devices. Yeah. How, how big is the fraud problem that this is going to solve? And how long will this, this take <coughs> to get to, let's say, half the users? You know? <laughs> well, the, the fraud problem is, is big. Um, in terms of basis points, when we're talking, you know, regular face-to-face uh, -face transactions, um, banks want to be in the range of 10 to 14 basis points, so it's 0.1% uh, of fraud. When you're looking at online commerce, um, you sometimes go into percentage points, so 2%, 3%, uh, especially on cross-border transactions. So it's it's huge. It's 10 times more than than regular fraud, um, and so this is really a problem. I mean, it's a problem for the bank. It's a problem for the consumer. It's a problem for us. Uh, because it affects people's buying pattern because they don't feel secure online uh, they don't want to buy you know large amounts because they they feel like it's it's not safe and so what we want to do is put all those cards uh, on the internet and it make people feel that it's as safe to buy online as it is to buy you know your coffee around the corner and so we're really I mean it's a multi-layer strategy of, of having these people shopping online so you have the the acceptance the merchant acceptance and this is trying to, to put confidence into people so that it's, it's, you know, it's one card that does it all. I don't need any extra device. I don't need to learn a new way of, of paying. It's my payment card. I know it. I trust it. And it's just that it's being dynamic. So, uh, pretty, pretty significant uh, cost savings for banks then. Huh? Definitely. I mean, In billions, billions. Yeah, we're talking, I mean, we're talking billions of dollars of fraud every year. Um, so this is a very serious problem. Now, a lot of people, uh, when they see electronic cards, are a little. Some of them are afraid of these because they've heard stories of RFID cards uh -huh. being able to be cloned and stuff like that. This isn't RFID, right? I, I can't just clone yeah. this card by walking by you with no, a no. sensor or anything like that. Yeah, in in in, uh, in these cards, we have a. Uh, well, it's very technical, but we have a, what we call an AEL five plus chip, which is the highest security level certification that you can get uh, from a chip. It's, uh, it's the level required by the government agencies. Uh, so it's, it's even higher than uh, what the, um, the banks, the banking system today is require, requ requiring for EMV, for instance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very high. And the other thing is uh, privacy. This card isn't broadcasting my location as I walk around or anything like At that. At right? all. It's not a tracking device. <laughs> uh, it does not uh, send back your... Uh, it doesn't send back your... Uh, your uh, um, location, your location, or your, the way you shop, or you know the way you use it, etc. Okay. Anything else I need to know about this card? Well, uh, hopefully, uh, this is going to um, to help uh, consumers. Um, you're going to start to see this uh, probably this year through pilots, and um, next year is going to be. Uh, uh, probably a bigger a lot, especially in the US. Right, cool. And where do I learn more about the card or learn about the technology inside? Well, you uh, can go to uh, uh, the, the Nagra ID security website. So it's Nagra, uh, 
it's nidssecurity.com or to the MasterCard website as well. Uh, or, or we also worked out with uh, Symantec for uh, uh, Symantec. Symantec, yeah, yeah. yes, for the authentication of the of the um, of the codes. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, and we'll link to some of those sites uh, at, at the end. Thank Thanks you, so much for showing me the credit card of the future. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, Robert. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Robert.